Hello students. So we will talk about geometric models today. So just to reiterate, we were looking at ingredients of machine learning where we were selecting the best features to design a model to perform the right set of tasks. Now, what are the kind of models that I can get? So I can get three kinds of models. I have geometric models, I have probabilistic models, and I have logical models. So today we will talk about geometric models. Now in the geometric models, uh, all these models come. So linear regression models, linear classification, SVM, nearest neighbor, and clustering. Now how do they fit in into geometric? Let's see. So in geometric models, the features could be described as points in two dimensions. So if I have in the simplest of models, I have one attribute and one target variable x and y and I can basically put them as a graph in a graph of two dimension. I can put these features as points. If I have three features, I could put them in a three dimensional space as x, y, z. Now they can be solved by linear regression. If I am trying to find out y from x values, then the simplest is the linear regression. And otherwise, if I have a curve kind of a relationship, so what will I do in exploratory analysis? We look at charts and graphs to be able to visualize the correlation between X and Y. And if I feel that these are not linearly related with each other, they follow a hyperbola or a parabola kind of a path, then I could use nonlinear regression models also. Similarly, when the features are not intrinsically geometric, but they can be modeled in a geometrical manner. For example, I have a time series data of temperature of a particular city as per the day. Then I could model it as a function of time in two axes. One axis could have the temperature and the other axis could have the time. In geometric models, there are two ways that we can impose similarity. So we could do both regression and classification here. For regression, we will use either linear regression or nonlinear regression. For classification, I could use either of these linear classification SVM nearest neighbor clustering. So we could use geometrical concepts like lines or planes to segment the instance space. Now what is an instance space? So instance space is all the possible instances. So suppose I have three values x1, x2, x3 and all of them are binary. So we know how to make the instance space. So my instance space would be something like this. So this is my instance space. So it means the combination of all the possible uh, instances is the instance space. So we could use geometrical concepts like lines, planes to segment the instance space. These are called linear models. So as we move forward, you'll be able to understand them better. Alternatively, you, we could use a geometrical notion of distance. So rather than using lines or planes to be able to segment these spaces. So suppose I have two classes like this. I have x's and I have circles. So I could use a line here. So this is a geometrical model, a linear model. Now if I have some point, some ways in which I am not able to distinguish these values. So we had talked about k-means here. So suppose these are the points that I have and I am trying to segment them. So I could use the distance where I am trying to cluster them here. So that is a distance based model, a geometrical model again, but it is based on the distance notion. So let's discuss these in detail. So the simplest of all is the linear regression where I'm trying to predict the value y in terms of the value of x. So this is my simplest model. Now here you can see that this is x and this is my y and suppose at these instances, I have the values of y given to me over here as red crosses. Now, I will try and figure out a line to be able to model these lines together, model these points together. Ideally, my ideal fit would be if I have something like this, a perfectly linear relationship, my line would have all these points on this particular line that I predict. Here you can see what is, the, what is happening. I have predicted this line. This is the equation that I have predicted. The actual value at this point for x is this, whereas I am predicting this value according to this equation. Similarly here, this is what is actual value and it is pretty close to what I predict. Here there is an error of this, here it is pretty close, here it is this, here the error is this, here the error is this and here the error is this much. So 
ultimately what is my error error is all these values now here you will see that the error is negative here the error is positive so if i try and model the error if i try to find out the error what will happen it will be the summation of all these errors e i and here it would have somewhere negative values here it would have somewhere positive values and when i add them up i would actually be reducing the error whereas the error actually exists so that is why the notion of square errors comes in so i need to square these errors so i ultimately do a summation of t minus y whole square so that i get the actual picture of the error and you know that uh, anything when squared is always positive so i am now getting a correct picture of the error here and my idea is to reduce this error so ultimately i have changed this into an optimization problem where i am trying to reduce the error mathematically so for my simplest regression problem line this is the equation which i just told you and here if i have multiple instances so i have x1 x2 x3 something like this and i have a y i could again model it like this where b is the intercept and i could have different weights attached to each and every attribute here so this is what my final function would look like it will be something like b plus x1 w1 x1 plus w2 x2 and so on so why is the prediction w are the weights attached to each and every uh, attribute here and b is the bias which we will talk about when we move further on to the specific lecture of linear regression now our idea is to get y as close to t now here uh, like i said if you talk about the loss function this is how you try to model it this is what i told you you try to model it like a square function and the summation of squares and here you put in half just to make the calculations convenient similarly so you will hear two notions of loss function and cost function so the loss function is for each and every attribute you are trying to find out the loss function cost function is the summation of all the training examples that you have so it's the average of the entire training examples when you take them together collectively it's known as the cost function and the aim is to reduce the cost function here when this is minimized my error is minimized and i will get y as close to t as possible now i could also vectorize this representation here so uh, initially if i say y is equal to b because this is what i'm trying to put and i model this in terms of a loop i'll say y is equal to y plus yj into xj this is how i can write and uh, when it talk about matrices here so to get the dimensions correct you basically take a transform of this the weights and this is how you represent in a vector form so this representation is used very commonly and you should understand that this is just the weights uh, associated with each and every attribute of x and this is the bias factor and you just take a dot product of the weights with the attributes here so an attributes just to remind you are x1 x2 and so on xn y is my target value let's talk about binary linear classification so in binary linear classification in classification we are trying to find out the discrete value target for binary values i just have two targets either a 0 or a 1 so anything with the target 1 is a positive example anything with the target 0 is a negative example the third part of it is the linear part in linear part we are predicting the linear function that we discussed and here my target value so this is going to be my target value and it will be based on certain threshold so i will be calculating this if this is greater than some threshold then i will classify it as a positive value if it is less than that value i will classify it as a zero value so now ultimately through linear regression i am able to do a classification here by putting a threshold value so now uh, ultimately what we do is we remove the threshold we just take it here and we put out this another factor this is known as w not here and we uh, put this term as wtx plus some w not and uh, to make things easier the calculation is easier we just say that w not is equal to the bias and that, that is why we just kind of eliminate the entire value and we say z is equal to wtx 
that is W transform with it's a dot multiplication here. Y is a binary output of 1 and 0 depending on the value of Z, Z that we get. So here now we are trying to visualize this as a classification problem and this is the equation that we are getting. Now this is very easy to visualize because I just have I have to find out the uh, boundary here to be able to segregate this. So ultimately what is happening is suppose I have these red uh, dots and I have these blue dots and this is my equation. So if you try to visualize this how will it look if P is the center of mass of blue uh, dots that I have so maybe it's somewhere here and N is the center of mass of these points so maybe it's somewhere here you will be able to calculate by taking average all the values divided by the number of circles that I have. Then what will I do? W is actually P minus N. Why? Because I am just taking the difference between these two, the center of masses and what is my X? X is the average value of these two. Right? So I will take an average value of these two and ultimately when I put it into my equation this becomes P minus N into P plus N divided by 2 is equal to t, t is my target value. So ultimately it is coming something like this p square minus q square is equal to 2t actually said as this is the entire essence of my equation that we have. So p is the number of blue points and q is the number of red points here and we are able to very simply model this and find out a classification line that is best suited for us. So why when does this fail? Linear classification fails when the instance space is mostly empty. So because my instance space, suppose I am talking about a large number of variables, then there may be a lot of values which can be created. The instance space is where everything, all the possible combinations exist. So as an example, suppose we are find, trying to find out whether a sentence is present in a vocabulary of 10,000 words. I have a dictionary which has 10,000 words and I am trying to find out whether a particular sentence is present in that or not. So whatever words I have, here the, my sample space will be mostly empty because maybe my sentence has just 10 words and I have a dictionary of 10,000 words here with me. So that is where my entire uh, sample space is almost empty. It's a very sparse um, space that I am talking about. So here the linear classification will fail because I will have very few points which will actually make a difference. So there we use classifications which are known as large marginal classifiers or the support vector machines. So the decision boundary is there based on a particular instance. So we will talk about instances of the particular sample space that we have. And this is an example. So we will have a complete lecture on SVM also. But you just need to understand that this is a distance based measure. And we are trying to segregate the points based on a measure of distance. So my geometric models were talking about properties such as lines and planes. Here a plane comes into action and that is why it is a geometrical model. That is why my SVM is a geometric model. Now then we took talk about the last part where we have the geometrical notion of distance. Also. So here we have covered the linear regression, the linear classification, the SVM. Now where does distance come in? In the nearest neighbor and the clustering. So in the nearest neighbor what is happening is I am trying to find out the suppose I have these points. I have blue points and I have these orange points. Now I have a new point here. And I want to find out whether it's a blue point or a, an orange point. What will I do? I will try to find out the point which is nearest to it and then assign the label to it. So that's my simplest of all measures. Now a KNN is basically when I take K points near to that. So if I my K is 3, I will talk about the 3 nearest points. So these 2 and this is the third one. And here I have 2 blues and 1 orange. So again this will be classified as a blue point. I could have different different uh, distance measures. I could take a pick of all these distance measures, take either one of them and go ahead and choose my uh, KNN implementation. We had discussed clustering in the unsupervised learning. Here clustering also comes as a geometric model. So in clustering what happens is that I have maybe two different classes. What would I do? I start by taking two arbitrarily. I assign two centroids. And maybe they are points which are from the same cluster initially but eventually we will get different clusters as needed. So it will always converge properly and we will ultimately find out the distance of each and every point from each and every centroid. So if this was my centroid and this was my centroid 
I will find out distances of each and every point from every centroid and then I will basically assign those points the same cluster which is closer to it. So here you can see this is closer to this one rather than this one. So it will be assigned to this cluster. Similarly, this one is closer to this one. So it will be assigned this cluster. And eventually what will happen when we start clustering and moving the centroids, we will end up with these two clusters. So here also we are using the distance metric to be able to converge the points and segre segregate them into classes. So these are the kind of geometric models that we have. Next we will talk about the probabilistic models. So this brings us to the end of this class. I will continue the next one. Thank you.